Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Christopher Aaron. This is the iGold Advisor channel, and it is June 23rd, 2021. It is time for a proper silver price update. It has been about a month since we've looked at the primary patterns that are shaping up in silver, so we will do that today. How are you doing? I know it's a crazy time in the world. Up is still down sometimes. Down is still up. Um, what did we have today? Did you guys hear about the um, uh, John McAfee, the former founder of the McAfee antivirus software, apparently committed suicide today in a prison in uh, Spain? That's the official word. He was about to be extradited to the United States on tax evasion charges. Uh, I've been following John McAfee for a while. Look, you don't have to agree with 100% of what everyone says. I certainly, um, although I would favor less taxes for everyone and less inflation, I certainly don't promote not paying your taxes for exactly this reason, because then they're going to throw you in a cage somewhere, and that's not the best way to have an impact on the world, is what I believe. But John McAfee, it was so fascinating to follow this guy over the last few years. He was on a boat in the middle of the Atlantic for a year or two in there, and he was talking, uh, he was openly uh, defying the IRS to come after him for not having paid his taxes, saying he was on international waters, they couldn't get him, et cetera, et cetera. This is a 75-year-old guy, former multimillionaire founder of the McAfee antivirus software, as I said. He was defying the IRS to come after him. And, you know, what happened is all of a sudden he had to land. He landed at a port in Spain and they arrested him at the port. You know, so Spain has a treaty with the United States to uh, go after tax evaders. Man, you know, and so then he's in prison for the last six months or so. And the news comes out today that the guy committed suicide. At least that's the official word. Who knows what really happened behind the scenes? So that's going on. What else? We had the Federal Reserve come out last week with the uh, the hint of an interest rate hike. Half of a, a percentage point interest rate hike was hinted at two years from now. And this throws all the markets into turmoil, including the precious metals. Please. As if, I mean, think back to the uh, think back to the global financial crisis. If you've been following the markets here for the last 15 years or so, the, the Federal Reserve back in 2007 said that they thought the subprime crisis was contained. A year later, this n nearly brought down the entire global financial system. Yet the markets are believing the Fed at its word that they're going to hike interest rates two years from now by half a percentage point. And as if that should cause any sort of notable reaction in the markets, come on, you know. The Fed doesn't know what it's going to do six months down the road, let alone two years from now. Anyway, we live in this time. There's a lot of intense stuff going on. Uh, but we want to try to come back to the charts and put things into a logical system, a framework that makes sense from a visible observable set of data points. Make sure you hit the big red subscribe button and the bell notification so you'll know when these videos come out. As I said, we want to get into visible, observable data. So it looks like silver was trying to bounce today and then they sold it back off again. I suspect there may be one more retest of this low here at 2550 or perhaps even a nominal new low down to 2515, 2535, somewhere in that range. So keep this in mind, but it looks like we're in a bottoming process. This was clearly a rejection on Monday night of this low, and then you had a rejection of this peak here. So we're caught in a consolidation. As I said, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening in the world, whether you're talking about coronavirus, still you know, in some places, still not fully open for business. Some businesses are still requiring masks. Other businesses are fully open. How are you to figure out what to do? Uh, it, it's very difficult. And then, I don't know, have you guys heard about these uh, 
these UFO papers that the U.S. Pentagon, now I'm not getting into a whole bunch of conspiracy theories here. I'm getting into the fact that the Pentagon of the United States is supposed to publish a statement before the end of this month, June, as to what they know about unidentified aerial phenomena, as they are now calling it. I mean, who knows what the heck they're about to say. So there's a lot going on to think about in the world. What I like to say is if we come back, though, to the visible, visible evidence, for me, what this does is when there's a lot going on in the world, and I might feel a little bit frazzled with all these news data points, all these crisscrosses, is this bullish? Is it bearish? Is there inflation? Is there deflation? Are we going to have Weimar style or Zimbabwe style hyperinflation? Or are we going to crash? Come back to the charts. Take a, a deep breath. Come back to the charts. Okay, right. All that stuff is going on. But we can focus on what's happening here right in front of us. Let's talk about it. Where are we in silver? Now, there are two very interesting patterns that are shaping up here. One is embedded within the second one, and I want to talk about what these patterns are for silver. And this will lead us into a study of triangle patterns. Triangles are really interesting in the financial markets. Not all triangles are what they would seem to appear. So let's talk about that. Where are we for silver? Let's talk about the black horizontal resistance zone here up in this region above $28.65 and extending for about $1.35 up to $30 or so. You could see one, two, and what I want to do is call this last hit up there a functional test of this zone. It's a zone between $28.65 and roughly $30. And you can see, yes, okay, so there were a few intraday spikes above the 2865 level. But really, every time we get up into this zone here, really anytime we get above 28, silver is encountering resistance. So even though this peak here was lower than the peaks back in 2020 and January 2021, functionally, if you look at where silver had stalled out on these previous times, there was only a matter of 48 48 hours, 72 hours where silver flirted with being above that 2865 level. So we are calling this a functional resistance zone, as you can see in black. And what do we have? A rising support trend shown in blue for the primary trends. So what it looks like silver wants to do here over the short run is either consolidate slightly sideways here above the uh, above the $25 level, or perhaps come and make one new nominal low. We talked about $25.35, maybe even $25.15 in an overnight spike. But it looks like it wants to do this here in order to give a functional third test on this rising support level. Can you see this here? It would be very logical for us to have three tests on the upper and three tests on the lower before a significant resolution. So where that will leave silver after we get this next test here down in the low 25s, mid 25s, is in this pattern. Now this gets us into the study of triangles. What are we talking about here? Where you have a flat functional resistance and rising functional support as shown in green, this is called an ascending triangle. We've been bringing this up about once every three or four weeks here on this channel. I want to remind you that the, the primary significant multi-year pattern here is an ascending triangle, which is a bullish pattern. It is a pattern that has a bias of resolving upward in the favor of the existing rising trend. Now, the interesting thing is that over just the last couple of weeks, we could also make the case that there is an embedded pattern here shown in the blue arrows, an embedded triangle, which it looks like after we get this next bounce here in silver is going to form an embedded pennant triangle. A pennant triangle 
is where the slope of the two sides of the triangle that are coming in together toward the apex, the slopes are roughly the same. Can you see that? This slope coming down here and this slope coming up are roughly the same leading into this apex, which, which would be in early October. So we have an embedded pennant triangle within the longer term ascending triangle. And so the way that it appears that this pattern is going to play out is for the pennant triangle to give one more test here, get one more hit on the upper declining boundary, come back into the middle. And now the key takeaway is that a pennant triangle is also a bullish pattern. So you have a bullish pattern embedded within a larger bullish pattern here. Now, just for the record, I'm not going to be saying that every single triangle is a bullish pattern. In fact, there are two triangle patterns that are bearish patterns, even if they occur within a previous rising trend, like we saw in silver from the coronavirus lows up through the peak last August. Let's talk about, just so you know that I'm, I'm aware of bearish triangle patterns here. I'm not trying to say that every triangle is bullish. Let's bring up an example of a bearish triangle pattern. If we had seen something like this in silver over the course of the last year with the existing slope of the lows, but let's say the highs were not flat or were not coming down at the same slope as the lows. Let's say the highs were just coming higher but ever so slightly nominal and nominal new peaks as shown in the red this would have a bearish implication for silver. This is called either an ascending wedge pattern or a terminal wedge triangle. It's a different kind of triangle. And although this triangle also slopes upward, it is in fact a bearish pattern. Just as an example, you can see this pattern played out in what the Bitcoin market Look at the date. This is our Twitter account here, iGlobalGold on Twitter. This is the tweet that I posted out. By the way, if you do not follow us on Twitter, you should do so, especially if you're investing in cryptocurrencies or the precious metals market, because look at when this tweet was posted here, April 16th, 2021. April 16th, Bitcoin was above 60,000. And in recognizing this type of red terminal wedge or terminal um, wedge triangle. This is what alerted us that a major top was setting up in Bitcoin. So make sure to follow our Twitter channel at iGlobalGold. Sometimes we post free things on Twitter. Our premium subscribers on the iGold Advisor webpage always get the first notification. So I notified premium subscribers that this top was setting up way back in March, okay? But then about a month later, I let people know publicly. And look, if you were just following our free, even our free work on Twitter, you have saved yourself almost a $30,000 loss on every Bitcoin. It has fallen from above 60,000 to near 30,000 as this is going out. The point that I'm trying to make here is that this was an example of what I was saying would have been a bearish pattern if it was like this. This terminal wedge pattern is a bearish pattern. We are not seeing the terminal wedge in silver. We are seeing two triangle patterns that have bullish implications until proven otherwise. And you take the market for what it is. So we have what we expect to happen here is for first the pennant triangle to break out a little bit later this summer. We'll get a fourth test at the horizontal resistance. That will set up the breaking of the ascending triangle. And I just want to remind you what we are talking about here. The pennant triangle is right there. That is the bullish embedded pattern. That should break out first followed by the ascending triangle, which will have four data points on the top shown by the black arrows. That should be breaking out as we get into the fourth quarter of this year. So different triangles have different implications. 
the ascending triangle and the pennant triangle have a bias in the existing trend, which in this case was higher. The wedge pattern, or if we had seen a descending triangle, that would have a bearish implication. We are not seeing that. And so what I'm saying right now is that I think we have a matter of weeks here for silver in the $25 range. And then this series of patterns get ready, gets ready to break, especially as we get out into the later part of this year. Now, if anything were to change with this, no pattern is 100%. If anything were to change, markets do change. Our premium subscribers are going to know about it first and they will have the chance to protect themselves first. And then a couple weeks later, we post that analysis here on YouTube. If you would like to learn more about our premium subscription in which we produce members only videos like this, not only do we cover physical silver, we cover physical gold, the US dollar index, the US stock market, the rest of the commodity sector, as well as the exact gold miners and silver miners that we are buying and selling here. You can learn about that on our homepage. That is called Precious Metals Intelligence. As I said, our premium subscribers always find out with several weeks ahead of time our best analysis before the free videos are posted. If you would like instead to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, if you have a unique situation or you're just learning about the precious metals, or if you have a multi-million dollar portfolio that you are looking to diversify in this sector, there's nothing too big nor too small that we can't work with. We sit down simply for 30 or 60 minutes at a time. I am fully independent. I take no fees from any of the companies, any of the ETFs, any of the bullion dealerships that we talk about. I simply look out for the best interest of individuals. And that's why I charge for my time because Generally, if people are not charging for their time, it means they're taking a kickback from someone else. That's how they're paying the bills. So I figured there was a better model here, which was to work with individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis, simply providing the best unbiased analysis that myself and the rest of our team are capable of. So you can find out more on the consultations tab on the website. Remember, there are at least four different major types of triangles. You could argue there are five or six depending on the, um, the former trend. And so we are actually seeing two embedded triangles, two embedded bullish triangles in the silver market. What we expect is that after this new low sets up, uh, the, the embedded pennant triangle with equal slopes is going to break first followed by the bigger picture, almost two year ascending triangle, which should break later this year. Uh, this should all be happening with the backdrop of what? Higher inflation in which the markets finally believe that higher inflation indeed is higher inflation and not the, the flip psychology that we've seen over the last few weeks. A lot going on here, guys. Whether you want to comment on the nature of triangles, the nature of the silver market, whether you have an opinion on the ongoings with uh, John McAfee, rest his soul, whether you b agree or disagree with, his, uh, with the way he lived his life, we wish him um, a steadfast passage into the next version of reality, which awaits. If you have any sort of sense of what's going to happen when the Pentagon releases those, those papers, I would love to hear your thoughts on that as well. I just think... I mean, everything's coming together. You know, the coronavirus is still wrapping up. But who knows if they're talking about another strain right now. I just think all these things are coming together to lead to a very exciting time to be participating in the markets. So I'm glad to have you here. Above all else, stay healthy so that you can keep participating here with us. And I'll see you for the next update within the next several weeks.